Yakalo comes via PayPal. He writes, if you're in the club and another dude touches your girls behind, situations like that, what's your advice? Well, number one, the goal is to not be in a club like that. There are a great variety of types of clubs. And, you know, granted, women like to go to the club in general. And some types of women like to be escorted by a man when they're in the club. But there are certain situations you should not find yourself in. Like me in particular, there are certain places I know it's better that I don't go. Like recently, there was a concert by the baby. There was a concert, and I hate saying his name is disgusting. There was a concert by Yo Gotti. There was a concert by French Montana. I wanted to go to all three of them. But last time I was at the Lil Wayne concert, and I was there with this chick too. So I went and I took this chick with me. And there's this drunk dude who kept bumping into me. And I turned politely the first time. I was like, bruh, like, pay attention out here. Like, please stop bumping into me. Then he bumped into me again. And I was like, bruh, like, honestly don't bump into me like I'm, I'm not the one to bump into. I've already told you. So like, so like slide over that way. Then he bumped into me again. And then I had to grab his neck and I say, look, bruh, I don't want to mess up my time tonight. And I don't want to mess up her time. And I don't want to mess up your time. But if you bump into me again, I'm going to break your jaw. I'm not going to say nothing to you. I'm going to break your jaw. And I'm going to keep hurting you till somebody pull me off of you. And to be honest with you, as crowded as this concert is, I don't think they're going to pull me off for a while. And then at that point, the girl that I was with turns around. She's like, Marquette, I really, I really believe he has developmental issues. I think he's a little bit slow. I don't think he's drunk. I think he's slow. And me, I couldn't really, like, he might be. Now, women are a little more in tune to certain things. I don't know if that was the case or not, but I say that to say this. Once he bumped into me that third time and I had to grab his neck, well, if he'd have bumped into me a fourth time, he'd have been getting monkey stomped into the ground. That's how I am. Knowing that, I said, okay, Marquette, don't go to any more concerts out here because these hip hop concerts, there's too many goofballs. There's too many goofballs. Broke people, low class people, and these are the kind of people who listen to this music even though it's what you grew up on. So you got to stay away from this stuff. So I say that to say to you, Saint, if you're in a situation where you're around the kind of people who would grab your girl's butt, you're in the wrong place. That's advice number one. Number two, you got to ask yourself, who are you? If a guy grabs your girl's butt, how are you looking at that situation? If it doesn't make you feel like fighting, then don't fight because that's not you. If it makes you feel like fighting, then that's what you got to do. But I would say the ideal thing is to not be in that situation. He writes, what's your advice for the non-aggressive? Suck it up and pull up your sleeves. Or if you're non-aggressive, avoid those situations. You're not going to thrive in that situation. That's my advice. Positioning. Be in the places that make sense for you to be. Be around the people who are of your feather. You're not aggressive. You don't want to be around a bunch of aggressive people in a hip-hop club. Thank you for that question, Saint. That, I, I think a lot of people benefited from that one. You know, the funny thing is that when you're talking about like physicality and violence, I really encourage you to read my book, not because I want you to buy it, but because there's a story in there that is so, so powerful. And it spans over a couple different chapters and it ends up in a kid getting killed. Long story short, this kid caught beef with the big homie and he ain't know I was the big homie. But it was a real tragic story where he, this kid ends up dead. And I want you to read the book so that you can estimate, is it worth it? Because sometimes bumping into somebody might turn into a fight. And that fight might turn into in the end of your life, right? So you always need to understand what the potentiality is. Like me, if I turn down a fight, Nine out of nine, I'm not turning it down because I don't want to throw hands. I love throwing hands. I'm not turning it down because I don't want to get hurt. I might turn it down because I don't want to hurt this other guy. Because I, you know, or I might turn it down because I don't want it to escalate and me have to go grab the click clack. Because if I, because hey, if I get done dirty or if I get jumped, I'm getting the yopper and I'm busting it off. Because that's who I am. I'm not about to get jumped and let anybody get away. You heard me? I'm not about to get punked. I'm not about to get robbed. So if you want to take something from me, you got to earn it. You hear me? So I try to stay out of those situations. And I know that they can end in death. And I know that for sure because I've been a part of several of those situations where it ended in death. 
And I wrote that down in my black box in my book so that you can read about that. And, and next time somebody bumps into you, you should say, is this worth my life? Am I willing to kill or be killed? If not, let it go. Because you often don't know who you're dealing with. Like the guy who was bumping into me in that club, he don't know that I box. He don't know that. So he doesn't, if we went hand to hand, he doesn't have a chance to win because I go hand to hand all the time. But even if I didn't box, I've been throwing hands in the streets many years before I box. So he doesn't know who he's bumping into. But further, he doesn't know that I clapped that thing at him. I don't know if he'll clap the thing at me. So anytime you're in this situation, you should always say, is this worth my life? Most of the time, no, it's not worth your life. That's why I wrote that book so you can get the insight and experience without having to go through it. Be peaceful. We say peace to the saints. Be peaceful. Like, I really mean that. Peace to the saints. You hear me? And the funny thing, saints, is I actually always choose peace. Like, anytime something's going awry, I always will first try to be friendly. I first try to create friends. I first try to see if, like, we can keep things easy and, like, calm. So take that into account. Like, always try to take the path of peace first. The saint writes, should I seek a team or potential investors when developing a product slash company, creating a med supply company, and I've been doing everything by myself? Number one, you can't do everything by yourself in a company. That's unwise. You're hustling backwards. In terms of investors, people want to invest in something that already makes money. So if it's not already making money, it's going to be harder to get investments. Thirdly, there's no such thing as developing a company. You're developing a product. If your product is successful, then you're developing a company. So I would highly advise you to get some expert advice and that you're going to have to pay for because people who have enough knowledge to tell you something wise, they don't do things for free because their time and their knowledge is valuable. The people who are giving you free information, it's because they don't have valuable time or knowledge. That's why they give it out for what it's worth, which is nothing. So if you're really bona fide in building a business eventually, but I should say firstly building a product, you should talk to someone and get some advice because if you're doing it by yourself, you're not putting your best foot forward, let's say that. One of the saints mentions, uh, you know, look at what happened at the Travis Scott concert. Yeah, that's 100% true. These are the kind of things that would never happen at an opera concert. It would not happen at a salsa concert, you know, like these are the things you should think about. King of Kings writes, he could have been a drunken boxer himself. Yeah, he could have been, but the thing is, is a drunk boxer going to be a sober boxer? No. And the other thing is, will I let him win? No. See, the thing about me, when I do something, I'm going all the way out. If you ever saw me in public and there was an issue and Bridget was like, no, 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 that's because she knows I'm going all the way out. She's mostly saying no for the other person because I go all the way out. If he would have won the fight, that would have been the worst thing he could have done because I won't lose. I'm going to win. And that's why you should never catch beef with people who go all the way out. You hear me? And that's why I tell people from the rip, I'm going to go all the way out. So if you don't want to go all the way out, don't get started because I'm going to walk all the way down the path. I don't care what's on the path. I go all the way down it. And that's the way I was raised. I really am that. You know, that's the way my father was. You hear me? That's in my DNA and that's in my upbringing. I was conditioned to go all the way out. And you'll hear weak, cowardly people say like, oh, you know, so-and-so used a weapon, that's, that's vaginal. Nah, they just got the job done. I've been stabbed before. I, <laughs> I've been stabbed before. I can show you where I've been stabbed before. Do I feel like the people who stabbed me were soft? Nah, they were gangsters. They were real live gangsters trying to kill me. Yeah, obviously it was amateur hour, but at the end of the day, I gotta respect the person who's trying to get the job done. If you catch beef with someone and you engage in a physical conflict, you're trying to incapacitate them. So if you have a more efficient way of doing it, beautiful. And that's why we should all stay peaceful at the end of the day. Yeah, the Black Baron writes, it was amateur hour. Oh yeah, it was absolutely amateur hour. I didn't write this story in the black box because there are some things that I didn't put in the black box just because one, I'm not trying to dry snitch, two, it's not past the statute of limitation, and three, there's no real moral to the story and I don't wanna teach certain things that are errant. When I got stabbed up, I got stabbed up because one of the homies, Crazy Rob, who's a real goon, 
Like, Crazy Rob is a real goon. That's my man. Like, I was a hustler. He was a gangster. I was the money man. He was like a super blood. But he had put in some work and on some essays, you know, some, like, some Latino gangsters. And I know a lot of people are not from California. Might not know this terminology. But he put in some work on some essays, and they couldn't find him. But they found me. And so when they found me, they pulled up on me when I was at a bus stop waiting to go to school one morning. I was coming from this girl house, actually. I woke up super early, went to this girl house, did what I did with her, and then I was sitting in a bus stop in Crazy Rob's hood about to go to, the, go to school late. And these gangsters were looking for Crazy Rob, but they couldn't find him. They found me. So they hopped out on me and stabbed me up. But it was like five of them. And the thing for me is like, bruh, if five of y'all can't stab me to death, this is amateur hour. But the moral of the story is that only happened because of birds of a feather flock together. You hanging out with gangsters, gangster things are going to happen to you, right? And the thing is, you might say, well, Marquette, if you did that all, all over again, when Crazy Rob did what he did to their people, would you still be there? Absolutely. And if you could do the situation all over again when they hopped out on you to stab you up. And here's the funny thing of my mentality. I remember this girl had asked me about the situation. She said, why didn't you run? Why didn't you run? And to this day, I'm almost saddened because do you know that when they hopped out on me, it didn't cross my mind to run. It didn't even dawn on me that I could have run. Could I have outrun them? No problem. I would have outrun them any day. No problem. But it didn't cross my mind to run because I was not brought up to run. I was brought up to fight. So it didn't cross my mind to run. Now, when they start stabbing me up, did I think I was going to die? Not really. But was I terrified? Yeah, you're terrified because I don't know if you guys ever been stabbed up. It's so intimate. When people are holding you down and stabbing you, like they're very close to you and you can see rage on their face and they're stabbing you and you can feel it going in and, and you're struggling and you got all these guys on you. So it's a terrifying experience and it's an uncomfortable experience. But if I could do it all over again, would I run? No, because if I ran, that would destroy who I really am. You understand? Like, I would have rather died right there than to run. Because everybody, every, the Marquette Devon Burton who had existed up to that point, everybody knew he don't run. He ain't soft. I can't live any other way. That's who I am. But if that's not who you are, don't pretend to be that. If you'd rather run, run. Would I respect somebody who runs? Absolutely. It's five of them. Run. But at that time in my life, I was not a runner. I couldn't run from that. Yeah, y'all see a guy right here. He says, I would have ran to get the AK. You funny. I didn't have the AK on me. I'm not even going to uh, front. I didn't have it on me. I was waiting to get on a bus. I just came from a broad's house. You heard me? Yeah, I ain't have nothing on me. I was naked. They caught me slipping. That's the definition of they caught me slipping. Sabi writes, not everyone is your friend, but not everyone that isn't your friend has to be your enemy. True story. But one thing I'll advise you, whether it's in business or in society, I always want to push someone onto one side so I can figure out where they're at. Because neutral people, you want to figure out what's what. Let me give you a quick situation. Long story short, I was going to meet up with Jabrizi to give him his backpack briefcase. So I give him his backpack briefcase and I pull up to the valet, but I wasn't valet parking. I was just parking my car there to deliver this to him. So long story short, I give him the backpack briefcase and then the valet person comes over and they're like, oh, hey, you got to move your car. And I say, oh, don't trip. I'm just going to be here a short time. Like I come here all the time. Like it's all good. Don't worry about it. And then the, the guy's like, no, no, you got to move it. Now, this is at a resort, so they have cameras everywhere. So I don't know what happened, but eventually, like, one of the suit guys is coming out, and one of the other valet people, like, a higher-up boss and valet comes over to ask me to move the car. So he's coming over, and then he sees it's me, and then he's like, oh, yeah, it's all good. You're good. And then I was like, all right, well, you know, like, am I good or am I not good? He's like, you're good. I was like, all right, for sure. Then the security comes over. He's wearing a yellow shirt. At this particular place, they wear yellow shirts. So the security's like, hey, hey, move your car. And my first thought is like, 
who is this cat like yelling at me? Like, number one, you're a security guard. You're a nerd to me. Boy, don't you raise your voice to me. That's my first thought in my head, but I always try to offer friendship. So I say, hold on one second. I go to my trunk, I grab a stack of money, and then I go back to, the, to approach the security guy. I walk past two of the valet people, the first person who didn't know me, who told me to move, and when I saw them, I gave them 100 bucks. I was like, yeah, I know you don't know me, but I'm Marquette Devon Burton. It's nice to meet you. Then I see the other one, the supervisor who does know me. And I was like, yo, what's up? It's good to see you. They're like, Marquette, you don't have to do it. Like, it's all good. I was like, nah, bro. Like, appreciate you. Thanks for coming out and showing me love. So I give him 100 bucks. Then I'm walking over to the security. And when I was walking to the security, the suit came out. This is like one of the bosses from inside of this resort. Now, this guy knows me too. So he's talking to the security. He's like, hey, hey, like, don't worry about it. Like, this guy's good. Just leave him alone. Everything's straight. So I get over there and he's telling the security guy, this guy's straight, don't bother him. So then I give the suit guy hundred bucks, like, yo, what up? Nice to see you. Thanks. Appreciate the love. So I give him a hundred and then I turn to the security guard and I offer him a hundred and he's like, no, I don't want it. I was like, what do you mean you don't want it? And he was like, I don't want it. I was like, you can't accept it. Like you're not allowed to accept it or you don't want it. He was like, I don't want it. I don't need it. I was like, no, I'm not saying you need it. I'm just, you know, I'm just showing love. I like to show love when I'm out here. Because I expect favor. You know, I show love to you. I expect you to show love back. And then he says, no, no, I don't want it. In my head, that was me saying, okay, there's the friend, meaning they're going to give me favor. Friend loosely, meaning these people are going to give me favor. Either they're giving me favor because they're scared or they're giving me favor because they like me. So there's the category where I have favor. Then there's the neutral people. They don't care either way. They're not going to do you dirty if they get a chance. They're indifferent. And then there's the enemy. These are the people who are going to do you dirty if they can. So this security dude, I knew he was an enemy. Number one, he's yelling out, like, move your car when it's not even that serious, bro. Like, you don't have to yell. You could have walked over. You could have said it peacefully. But when I offered him the money and he's too proud to accept it, now, mind you, you're a security guard. Like, you're not making a lot of money. A $100 tip is a lot of tip for anybody. I don't care what your job is. That's a good tip especially when you didn't have to do anything to earn it. That's a great tip, especially when I'm trying to like give you the opportunity to be friends and you see it's all good because the big boss that wears the suit just accepted a $100 tip and he's not in a tipping role where he gets tips. You heard me? So anyways, basically, I was trying to check and see where everybody's temperature is. So what I did was I created favor among all the other people who didn't know me, which was just one person, you heard me? I don't like you to be neutral. I like you to be on one of those sides. You're a friend or you're a foe. You see, because then I know what you're going to do. I can predict you. Huh? You cannot dominate unless you can anticipate. I want to push you to one of these sides so I know what you're going to do. A neutral person, I cannot predict you because you're indifferent. That's game. You should know this is going to help you. Huh? We want to know where you stand at. That's real talk, man. So trust me, every time I go to that resort and I see him, I always make sure that I, you know, I let him know like, hey, what's happening? I always go out of my, my way to check him. I always say something disrespectful. And here's the funny thing. I get away with it because the other security guards know me and either respect me or they know that I'm plugged in with the bosses. So I can say and do whatever I want. I'm a VIP at that institution. So I can literally threaten this man subtly and get away with it. So he knows that if he crosses me, I could get him fired, or more likely, if I'm just outright intimidating you rudely, you know I'm the personality that doesn't care about doing something grimy, which is true. I want you on one of those sides. Yeah, I give you a chance to meet the saint, but if you want to meet the other side, absolutely. Yeah, and another thing to the, the disbelievers, you have to understand the difference between people who have experience in life and people who don't have experience. People who spend their whole life on the internet, when I say something, they can't believe it's real because they don't have experience. You see what I'm saying? No one talks like I talk without being who I am. You can't talk like this without being me, which is to say, I've lived out the things that I tell you, which is why I wrote a book and I put everyone's legal real name in there. There's only two instances where I use a, a fictitious name, and that's to protect the guilty, not the innocent, the guilty. You heard me? Shout out. And I'm not saying anyone needs to be me, but I'm saying if you, if you want to operate in an environment and you want power in the environment, you want influence in the environment, 
for the people who don't like you, for the people who don't love you, for the people who won't give you favor, fear is the best way to go. And that's not my idea. That's timeless knowledge. I broke down a book called The Prince by Machiavelli. Love and fear is what you operate on, not indifference. You don't operate on indifference. Keese writes, if it reaches that point, always go all the way out because it's best to assume they'll do the same. Keese, you're right. And what's more is if you're not going all the way out and the other person is, you're in trouble. Right? So I agree with you wholeheartedly. Alpha writes, Puerto Ricans and Mexicans stay with the shanks. I'm not gonna say their entire ethnic group does that, but if, you, if you're dealing with like real gangsters, like you're dealing with LKs, you're dealing with real essays, you're dealing with Norteños, you're dealing with Southsiders, you're dealing with like people who are like really with the shits, 18th Street, La Prada Street gangsters, like you're dealing with real people? Oh, absolutely, they got something for you. Believe that. Yeah, <laughs> believe that. I guarantee it. Carlos writes, what if we grew up with pure love and it made us soft as adults? Well, soft is a general term that can apply to a lot of things, but you don't need to be hard if that's not who you are. But I would advise you not to be in situations or environments where that is required. That would not be smart. But undoubtedly, a man should be hard on himself so that he can last and thrive in his environment. Because when you're not hard on yourself and the world is hard on you, you will break. So you must put yourself through the challenges. And you have some nerds on here. One guy writes, everyone's a gangster on YouTube. Number one, I would never identify as a gangster because I don't need a gang. I'm a one-man band. I identify as the money man. I'm a hustler. You dig? And if you ever go to where I grew up or where I've stomped my feet, people will never say Marquette's a gangster. They say Marquette's a hustler. He's the money man. He, he always had a product to sell, and he was also generous enough to put product in other people's hands. The man's a hustle. We don't slow the cash flow up for gangsterism, no sir. Shout out to the moderator. Yeah, I offered him 100 bucks. He literally could have been 100 bucks richer that day, or he could have had a bad attitude. And I knew what that was, you hear me? I knew it was the fact that the reason I don't deal with all this black stuff, oh, the black people, the black community, that's all nonsense. There's no such thing. There's just hustlers and there's broke people. There's winners and there's losers. I'd rather hang out with white hustlers and Asian hustlers than black losers. You heard me? I'd rather hang out with black hustlers than black losers. They're, your racial category, your ethnic group doesn't mean anything. The question is, what is your true feather? Not what color are you painted, but what is your true feather? And what I mean by that is the security guard who is yelling, move your car, he was mad because I pulled up in a $177,000 sports car and I parked it where I wanted to park it and I was living big boss status. And the homie I was delivering the backpack briefcase to, he had his assistant and she's video recording the whole situation. He was mad that it was two black guys who are doing way better than he's doing and he can't figure out why he's living in poverty. That's what it was. It was envy. But I still tried to show him love even though he was envious because that's what's in me, love. But here's the thing, if you're a hater, you're going to hate regardless, you heard me? Like me, when I see someone winning, I'm proud of them. I identify with them in winning. 